Hello everyone, bringing you a video today looking at this collection of bits and pieces and this is sealed pattern examples of the Mark II 1958 pattern web equipment. Now the Mark II designation was reserved for a trial set of the equipment which was made in nylon and we have various components of this here. We don't have a complete set but nevertheless there are quite a few elements of the design here in the form in which they were initially uh, designed and trialled and, and these are the sealed pattern examples and obviously that would govern future manufacture of these components. So as I say not everything's here but nevertheless I thought it would be interesting to have a look at the, the items which are available and you know, available to look at in the National Army Museum's collection. Uh, this video of course coming to you from the National Army Museum's reserve collection at Stevenage. So we'll start off with this item over here. We have here the belt from the equipment set and then this is as you can see the nylon is rather stiff compared to cotton webbing this is essentially a standard 1958 pattern belt in form but manufactured in nylon and you can see that you know just in the same way as a standard 1958 pattern belt with the hooks and eyelets down the center there and then the, the mills patent buckle there it has the d-rings at the back to allow the cape carrier to be attached underneath the belt Ignore the little yellow tag, that's just the museum's uh, own uh, tag with the, uh, the accession number on it. We have here the, uh, the seal, and we have here the, the seal pattern labels, the, the, uh, the, the details here, and obviously this is an SCRDE prototype, so we also have the label for that as well. We'll get a close-up look at the standard pattern label here. As you can see, this is belt waist normal, Mark II and size is normal in this instance, that what, that's what normal refers to. You have the NATO stock number at the top there, the catalogue number, and then the date of sealing which is the 16th of the 8th 1976. And you can see from the rear of the label here this wasn't issued out or there's no record of this having been issued out for further manufacture. The prototype label notes the project number as P1276 and then you have various details there again, the belt waist normal, the NATO stock number, and then on the back of here you have development approved by signature and 3rd of August 1976 on the back of the label there. That is the belt. Slide these back into shot here. We then have the ammunition pouches. So we have a left hand ammunition pouch here. As you can see it's standard 1958 pattern form. So the third issue pouches from the, the cotton version of the web equipment were copied in nylon for this set. You can see the loops on the side for the bayonet there. The angled fitting on the back where it fits onto the belt little ring at the top to allow the yoke to be attached and then the standard quick release fastener at the front there. This particular example again being a sealed pattern we have the sealed pattern or well, the standard pattern labels here and again the, the prototype label and you can see from the standard pattern label here this is pouch ammunition left mark 2 again the mark 2 designation being reserved for this nylon version of the equipment the catalogue number or NATO stock number at the top there and again the date of 16th the 8th 1976. However, on the back here, we do have an example of this one having been issued out for further manufacture, and you can see the date there of 16th of the 11th, 1976. Taking a look at the prototype label, again, you can see the details here mirrored across, about this being a pouch ammunition, left mark two, etc. And then to the rear, you can see again the same signatory and the uh, approving the development and the date of 3rd of August, 1976 again. So that is the left-hand ammunition pouch. Looking at the right-hand pouch here, we can see it's not exactly a mirror image. The, pou the pouch retains the extra pouch on the side, which of course initially was designed to take the Energa rifle grenade adapter, which allowed rifle grenades to be fired from the self-loading rifle. That had been withdrawn by this point, but the, uh, the pouch retains that element of the design, as I say, copied directly from the third issue of the, the cotton version of the web equipment. Fittings on the back, same again, the angled hooks and so forth there, as you can see. And otherwise, it is a mirror image other than that side pouch in having the quick release and so forth and being angled in the opposite direction. This example doesn't have the prototype label but the standard pattern label nevertheless marks it out as pouch ammunition right mark two. The NATO stock number at the top there and again the date of sealing at the bottom is 16th of the 8th 1976. Again this was issued out for manufacture and you can actually see Miko at the bottom there 23rd of the 6th 1977 and this of course would be for trials so larger numbers of these made for troop trials. This set of equipment, of course, was never actually introduced, but was trialed. So large enough numbers were, were made to perform meaningful troop trials. So there we are, that's the, the right-hand ammunition pouch there. 
Moving on to this side here, one small item which we have here is actually the, the little utility strap. And this, as you can see, is essentially a nylon version of the cotton example, but it doesn't have a crimp tip on the end. One, ex one advantage of nylon over cotton, of course, is that you can just uh, melt the end there and that stops any fraying. So slight detail difference in the design there, apart from the change in materials. You have here a master pattern label, and you can see details of this here, strap webbing mark two. And then you have the native stock number above that. And again, you have a prototype label on this, and you can see the details there again, strap webbing mark two. And again, the approval signature at the back with the date of 3rd August, 1976. So these little utility straps are carried in a little uh, pocket in the, in the top of the rear pouch lid, and they can be used basically to strap stuff onto the equipment. Uh, they're quite a useful little thing to have. And uh, as I say, replicated in nylon here from the cotton version of the equipment. We'll put that to one side up there. Next thing to look at here is the cape carrier. Now, well, certainly that's what it was referred to as part of the, the cotton equipment, and that name carried across to the Mark II version. So we turn this around here. As already said, the D-rings on the back of the belt allow this to be carried using the hooks here. This is entirely analogous to the cotton version, the later cotton version of this. You can see here there are three different adjustments for closing this. So you have three rings here, depending on how tightly you want to close this around what you're carrying in it. And you have the fittings on the front here to carry the head for the lightweight pick. So you can carry the head in this pouch across the back here, and otherwise this strap across here stabilizes the handle of the, the lightweight pick or shovel as it comes down the back. So it's, it's analogous entirely to the, the cotton version of the 1958 pattern cape carrier, just made in nylon. And again, it is a sealed pattern. So we have the standard pattern label here, and then the prototype label here. The standard pattern label notes this as carrier cape mark two and gives the native stock number at the top again. And you can see the date of sealing at the bottom there, 16th of the 8th, 1976. And this has been issued out M Wright and some, uh, 10th of the 11th, 1976, as you can see on the back there. So that is the Cape Carrier. As I said, the assumption being with Cape Carrier is it was originally intended to carry the, the ground sheet cape and then later carried the poncho. So that's the, the official name for it is Cape Carrier. We'll put that over here. And the final thing we're going to look at is the rear pouches. Now. These are, again, um, analogous to the, the, last, the latter version of the, the cotton 1958 pattern rear pouches. They close at the front with a quick release, as you can see there. If I lift the lid up here, you can see the section of nylon there, which, the, uh, which would be used to carry the uh, small utility strap when it's not being used for other purposes. And then if we look at the rear here, you can see the fittings on the back. You have the extra set of metal loops up at the top there so that these can be attached onto the upright straps on the yoke to stop them sagging away from the body. You can actually see the chalk marks on the back here. Uh, hopefully you can see that at the angle you're looking at it, where the uh, markings have been put before these various fittings have been stitched on. So you can, obviously these have never been used being sealed patterns. So the actual markings from manufacture can be seen on the back as well. But they're exactly, as you'd expect, a copy of the 1958 pattern in the way they function. Um, just manufactured in nylon. So we'll have a look now at the, the standard pattern label, which is attached to these. Again, don't have the, the prototype label in this instance, but we do have the standard pattern label here. And this obviously designates these as pouch rear Mark II. Again, the Mark II designation being used for the nylon equipment. And you can see the NATO stock number at the top there. And that's actually been put in the spec specification number section rather than the catalog number, interestingly. And then you have the date of sealing of 16th of the 8th, 1976 again, and at the back here, we do have uh, an issue date. This has been issued out. Difficult to read there. The company this has been issued to, perhaps someone can make that out. And the 17th of the 11th, 1976. So there we are. That was the rear pouches from the set, a sealed pattern examples of those. So hopefully it's been interesting looking at this. Obviously I now just have a big pile of green nylon in front of me here. Uh, Interesting to see sealed pattern examples of these. I don't have a full set, but I'm not far off having a full set. Something I'll definitely be covering on the channel going forward. It's interesting. In a way, it's a shame this wasn't introduced. Uh, it's an improvement on the cotton version. Obviously, it doesn't uh, hold moisture, doesn't get wet and heavy in the same way 1958 pattern does. And it's also far better from a, a chemical decontamination point of view as well. Uh, but it, the British Army would, of course, not introduce nylon webbing on a large scale or, or standard uh, issue basis until the introduction of PLCE in the early 1990s. 
just prior to the Gulf War, and obviously there would then be a period of transition over to that. But this was a, an attempt to introduce a nylon uh, set of equipment for the British Army. It was one experimental example of that, which wasn't persevered with in the end. Hopefully you found it interesting looking at these. If you have and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, little notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated as they always say. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address down below as well. That's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.